today how to better manage your risk tolerance and make smarter decisions. Hi, I'm Graham Newell with more of the latest brain research on what motivates us to make good and bad financial decisions. My speeches and webinars teach how to recognize the signs that an impulsive decision might be likely. Click the subscribe and the bell below to see more of my videos. Okay, let's do a little test. Let's say you're in charge of keeping the drinking water safe in your town. There are two rivers going through your city, but both are contaminated. Unfortunately, you only have enough disinfecting agent to treat one river. I'd like you to choose which river you'd treat. If you treat the water in river number one, you can reduce the risk of dying from contamination from 5% to 2%. So that's our first scenario. Now, if you treat the water in river number two, you can reduce the mortality rate from 1% to 0%. Which river would you choose to treat? I'd like you to pause this video right now and cast your vote in the comments section below. Also, let me know the reason you voted like you did. Well, the plan that would save the most lives is to treat river number one. Did you get it right? If not, don't feel bad. Most people incorrectly guess river number two. It's easy to see why reducing the risk to 0% just sounds like a better option. But let's do the math real quick. Let's say 1,000 people drink the water for both of these scenarios. On river number one, 3% more people are saved. 3% of 1,000 means 30 more people will survive. On river number two, 1% more people are saved. 1% 1 of 1,000 means only 10 people are saved. Treating river number one is three times better. This is a demonstration of the cognitive bias called zero risk bias. It's our pesky tendency to favor the complete elimination of a risk, even when other options produce more overall gain. Zero risk bias is a driving force behind brands like Nordstrom. It's famous for its zero risk return policy. No matter what the reason, Nordstrom's will always accept your return. Customers know they're going to pay a premium price for this privilege, but they also know there'll be zero chance of buyer's remorse. This puts their mind at ease. And it's this feeling that makes the zero risk bias so enticing. They can check that risk off their list. They can banish it from their mind entirely and not worry about it again. But unfortunately, eliminating that last little bit of risk usually comes at a tremendous cost. If we can learn to tolerate just a bit more risk, the upside is usually much greater. But the trade-off is you lose that peace of mind that comes from absolute certainty. This is the reason developing new drugs is so expensive and takes so long. The public just won't accept a drug that has an upside of curing huge numbers of people suffering from a life-threatening illness, but also has a downside of substantial side effects that would kill a small percentage of the people who took it. The net gain of this drug would be a lot more people surviving, but our brains just can't accept the downside cost. Risks are tremendously threatening to us, and our brains are always looking for ways to categorize them so they seem less scary. This causes our brain to do a little mental sleight of hand. It tends to pay more attention to the number of risks we face, counting them off one by one but it pays less attention to what's really important, the total volume of risks we confront in our lives. People tend to be happier if they face a few big risks as opposed to 10 little risks. It just takes too much mental energy for us to keep track of so many different dangers. We want it simple and identifiable. And in the world of investing, this is the reason so many people lose so much money. Some industries unquestionably require phenomenally low risk models. It would be absolutely unacceptable for the airline industry to have a 99.9% .9 success rate. Tens of thousands of people would die in crashes every year. But the world of money isn't like this. The people who win are the ones who learn to consciously manage their risk aversion. They don't fall for zero risk bias. They purposefully add well-considered risk to their life. Most importantly, they learn to recognize and manage their reactions when risk threatens to freak them out. Back in 2008, when the market was at the bottom of the financial crash, panicked investors made a run on treasuries. They were so distraught from the crash that they just needed a break from the terror. 
Buying zero-risk treasuries helped them to feel better, but these investors also lost out on one of the biggest bull runs of the century. There are circumstances where zero risk is worth paying for. For example, life insurance to protect your family's future. That's non-negotiable. But generally, and especially in finance, zero risk means very low returns. You'll be playing the game from the sidelines. If you'd like to learn about another cognitive bias that causes us to misjudge risk, click on the info card in the corner right here. You'll learn all about the neglect of probability bias. So what's the best way to avoid the zero risk bias? The key is understanding all sides of the bets you place. Risky moves usually have a more obvious downside. To balance that out, actively seek out information on the opportunity costs you may be missing because you're making an overly cautious bet. Make sure you thoroughly immerse yourself in both scenarios. Remember that you're actually creating greater risk when you try too hard to completely eliminate it. Right now, I'm working on another video about how cognitive bias lures us to make bad financial choices. If you'd like to be alerted when that video is completed, just click on my face below and subscribe. And be sure to click that bell as well. I've created tons more videos of how brain science can help you make smarter money choices. Click on this box to see the full list. I'm Graham Newell, and that's Better Decisions Through Brain Science.